Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. In today's special episode, we sat down with Chris Fenton, author of Feeding the Dragon, Inside the Trillion Dollar Dilemma Facing Hollywood, the NBA, and American Business. He touches on Top Gun Maverick not appearing in China, if there's a turning point in Hollywood when it comes to the China market, and how this could all play out going forward. Let's dive in. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. So lately, big in the headlines is Top Gun and the success it's having, including not being in the China market. So how significant is that? Well, it's it's an interesting story to say the least. I mean, I think if you if you backtrack and just look at what the movie is about, which is about American exceptionalism and sort of this、uh, military that is world class, best in the world, and sort of the policemen of the world in a lot of ways, you could see that. Just the narrative of it, the thematics of it, might not be exactly palatable for the Chinese Communist Party to begin with. So I think there was always an idea that it might not get into that market, even though it's a big franchise and has the possibility of generating huge box office. So that was when Paramount made a very good decision if they're thinking about business in China, and they brought in Tencent as a financier. But when Tencent actually saw a cut of the movie and saw the trailer for that movie, they saw the Taiwanese flag on the actual jacket, the flight jacket of Tom Cruise's character, and saw the Japanese flag there too, and they felt like that was a little bit too sensitive in order to try to get that movie approved by censors in China. So they requested Paramount to take it off. Now Paramount took it off for the trailer. Um, but a lot of people noticed it being taken off for the trailer, so it created a geopolitical controversy around the world, and particularly in the United States. So that heat that was turned on back in 2019 continued as COVID delayed the release of the movie, and I think ultimately Tom Cruise and the filmmakers involved and the studio Paramount said enough is enough.、Um, this movie doesn't stand a great chance of getting in the market. Number one. Number two is a lot of the movies from Hollywood that had been getting into the market hadn't been making all that much, and number three is hey we're American, we should protect free speech rights and the freedom of creativity rights of our filmmakers, and to edit something like that for the world because China is demanding it just doesn't seem right. So they put those flags back in, and of course now China is not happy about it, but I would say the rest of the world is pretty happy about it to the tune of. Three hundred million dollars worldwide, and that doesn't include a single dollar coming from China. What is interesting, though, there's another book called Red Carpet that kind of mentions how this all played out, and was saying when Paramount pitched it in 2017, part of the financing was, as you mentioned, Tencent backing it, but also what was expected to come from the China market. But what do you see kind of changing it besides the American theme? Was maybe COVID playing in? Would there be even a profit from China? Well, I think if you look at the returns of a lot of Hollywood movies five years ago versus the returns of movies during COVID and during that post-COVID period when theaters were back open, sort of last summer, the the returns were nowhere near what they used to be. So that risk-reward calculus of of dealing with the aggravation of of placating censors, placating the Chinese government, in 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 a, sort of the effort of generating as much box office as possible in China, that risk reward calculus just didn't make sense anymore. So the aggravation, if you look at movies like Mulan, or you look at Chloe Zhao involved with the Eternals, or Shang Chi, which had Chinese thematics in it,、um, there's lots of movies that had been sort of going overboard in regards to. Placating the Chinese government, yet they simply weren't getting in the market or just weren't generating great box office returns. So I think now you look at studios going, well, wait a minute, is this all worth it anymore? And the fact is, if you look at say the Women's Tennis Association, who took a stand when the Peng Shui incident occurred last year, where she took a stand against a Very powerful former Chinese Communist Party official over harassment claims, and she sort of disappeared. The Women's Tennis Association came to her defense, and if you look at 
how the brand built of the Women's Tennis Association after taking that stance, after taking a stance that protected human rights, that protected freedom of speech rights, that protected a lot of the values and principles that we all have, that a lot of the players have associated with that league, it became a huge brand builder for them. So even though they lost events in China, they lost sponsors in China, they gained events around the world and they gained sponsors elsewhere. So it actually became a money maker for them in doing the right thing. And I think you're seeing the same thing in regards to something like Top Gun. I think you're seeing the same thing in regards to a movie like Spider-Man, where they were requested to remove the Statue of Liberty and ultimately Sony denied that request. Um, people are rewarding doing the right thing. So I like to say that doing the right thing and capitalism can actually coexist, and we need more people to realize that. On that note, Chris, do you see this kind of being a sustainable trend in Hollywood, not needing the China market, or is that due to the lockdowns? How do you see this playing out? I think uh, Hollywood has found a way to monetize premium and I would call super premium content, which is studio level movies around the world in a much more efficient way. So the monetization and the efficiency to monetize has created better revenues and better profits for the studios. So quite frankly, China is not needed as much in the equation anymore. And there are actually studios now that are green lighting films with a zero in the China column. And so with these Hollywood films, how much money is China getting out of it? Do you see maybe China starting to pander to get the movies in? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, one of the reasons why they needed Hollywood movies was to fill the seats of all these theaters that had been built. And these theaters weren't just standalone theaters. They were mega complexes that were part of the cornerstones of lots of real estate development. So if they couldn't make those theaters um, healthy, then those real estate developments around those theaters would be unhealthy too. So they really needed Hollywood to fill the seats. But now, as we've seen, China has really essentially learned how to fish. In order for us to sell the fish of Hollywood in that market, we had to teach them how to do it themselves. And now they're doing it extremely well to the tune of several movies now that are approaching that $1 billion U.S. box office mark in China alone. So do they need Hollywood moving forward? I would question the jury is still out on that. I would imagine that if Hollywood just goes back and makes the movies that they want to make, and a lot of those movies are going to have nothing sensitive about China simply because they're not stories that are relevant to anything sensitive about China. If they're good movies, they're universal, China is going to allow them in the market to be monetized because those movies will help fill seats and they'll placate the, con the consumer over there that's looking for some of that Western content. Um, but anything else, anything that's marginally sensitive or um, you know, essentially displays aspirational qualities of democracy or Western values and principles, those movies are probably going to be persona non grata. And so going back to Top Gun real quick, do you see this as just like maybe a one-time thing or you kind of mentioned already, like maybe Hollywood is learning to just do whatever they want. So how do you see that playing out? Well, we've seen essentially Hollywood and we don't know exactly who's making these decisions and why, but we saw with Doctor Strange, the latest Marvel movie that came out, they actually had um, an Epoch Times that Falun Gong uh, essentially um, owned and, and operated newspaper stand um, in one of the scenes, which is obviously very aggravating to the Chinese censors and to China. Um, who put it in there and why it's there is hard to you know, sort of define, but the fact of the matter, it was in there. And there's a lot of people looking at those movies in production and in post-production, and they knew it was there. We also saw Sony, who allowed um, the filmmakers to protect their freedom of creative or creative expression and keep the Statue of Liberty in the third act of that movie, right? And that was in defiance of what China wanted. So we're seeing a pushback against what China is demanding, mainly because the China market doesn't mean as much as it used to to Hollywood, but also they've pushed it too far and enough is enough. And I think Hollywood has said, you know what? 
we're going to be rewarded by taking a stand against China elsewhere, even if we lose that market. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Chris Fenton, author of Feeding the Dragon, touches on how we got to this point, where Hollywood panders to Beijing. All that's coming up and can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a free 14-day trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you soon.